it's Marla Martinson, and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid, and I am back again with Rachel Thompson. Hey! Yay! Hey! Bad Redhead Media! We've got two bad redheads here today, and we are going to talk about social media. So, um, Rachel, she's an expert on this. She's also an author. We're going to put all her links down below, so if you want to check her stuff out, you... You're going to go check it out. But she says, do you ever feel overwhelmed by how to market your book? How to gain the most benefit from social media? Yes. Perhaps <laughs> many of you feel the same, and that's where I come in. I learned how to brand myself, pre-release activities required prior to the book launch, all about Amazon, what it takes to make my three books, Broken Pieces, A Walk in the Snark, and Man Code Exposed, number one bestsellers. So you you are amazing with marketing, I have to say. I've been following you for a long time. Thank you. <laughs> and I would love uh, for you to give a few tips to people about, uh, well, Facebook we were talking about earlier, and I want to get into that, Fa what's going on with Facebook and marketing your book, and just the best platforms to do it. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit earlier in the other video, but I'll, I'll recap here. Um, when I first started with marketing, um, I come from a pharma background, so publishing was really all new to me and, and blogging, and, and I really didn't understand the importance or even what SEO meant, which is search engine optimization. And a lot of authors have absolutely no idea. And I, was, I started on Blogger because it was easy, f 10 minutes, I was blogging, and woo, this is great. Um, as I became more sophisticated with the whole marketing concept and I um, hired a wonderful coach um, and I can give you her information later, she set up my blog uh, websites actually for me um, and I still work with her to this day and she recommends using WordPress. Now some people say, oh, you have to have a degree to use WordPress. Not true. Not true at all. If I can do it, anyone can do it, right? Because I am not a tech person. I'm not either. I have WordPress, and some things I can do on it, some things I can't. you got to yeah. learn it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's worth learning from a, a professional. But my understanding from her, and again, if this is you know wrong, then don't shoot me. Don't throw darts at the screen. But what she taught me was how to optimize my blog posts. And what that means is understanding what your keywords are, um, keywords being what the topics and tags and categories and all those kinds of things are where, um, and I'll go into that more in a little bit, but using the same words in throughout your post that you would talk about, you know, basically, um, in Twitter or Facebook or, you know, your whole, what your whole branding is about. So let's say I'm talking about, you know, what is this secure flex wrap tape because, you know, my, my cat went after me earlier this morning. Um, you would want to mention that in your post as opposed to just, you know, band-aids or something. Because Google crawls and reads things, right, and can see that yes. in there. Yes. So, you know, that wasn't the best example, but um, if you're talking about something, talk about it. I mean, it's really not brain surgery. People hear the term SEO and they go run and hide. I know. It's like, do I have to pay thousands for a specialist to, to get me on the searches? And Yeah. Yeah. And so you just want to make sure that the words that you're talking about, you know, if you're talking about chairs, talk about chairs. Put chairs in the post. Put chairs in the title. If you add pictures of chairs, there's a place that you click on the picture and you can add chair mm -hmm. inside the picture. So everywhere that you can, you want to put that keyword. Okay. And when the little crawlers go through, that means that somebody who's, who's looking for a book or a post, in this case, about chairs, mm -hmm. your post will drift up to the top. And so really that's from a you know very basic explanation from a nerd like me, that's really what that means. And so, you know, I think it's it behooves all of us to just do a little bit, you know, scan a few articles, get enough information to be dangerous, mm -hmm. and then, you know, apply what you can and, and it will help you. <coughs> Excuse me, from that perspective. Keywords are very, very important as your your foundation for everything else that you're going to be doing, whether it's blogging or social media or, you know, any advertising that you do, you just need to be consistent across that whole platform. 
And I was, I'm always confused about these hashtags. Now, I know the hashtags on Twitter. So let's say I put up a dating uh, link to a dating blog post or a dating video, and then I want to put hashtag dating, hashtag dating crazy bitches or <laughs> whatever, hashtag dating rich guys or hashtag yeah. dating in L.A. or whatever your what topic. And then that will make so other people looking for that topic can find it. But then somebody said, oh, you can put hashtags in your description box on YouTube videos. Then I see hashtags on, on Facebook posts. I'm seeing hashtags. What are all these, where do they really apply? I mean. It's interesting. Um, hashtags really started on Twitter. And people, I mean, to this day, it's amazing to me how people just ignore them completely like they don't exist. Um, I started several hashtag memes, like Monday blogs. I started that back in 2012. Um, I started several chats. I started sex abuse chat. I started gravity chat because I direct the gravity imprint now for Book Trope. And people don't realize that chat means there's a chat going on. Which I went is, on one of your Friday chats once a year ago. Oh my or gosh, something. yes, that was a long time ago. We did Friday a martini cocktail chat. hour, martini hour martini chat. Martini chat. Yeah, that one's defunct. We got too busy, but um, yeah, that was with Jackie um, Bernardi. We had fun. But anyway, um, so when you see a chat, it means people are talking about a specific topic that's in that word chat. So the, ch the hashtag has meaning. Mm -hmm. And really what it means is it's a uh, shorthand for something. So if you put the hashtag in the search, anything having to do with that hashtag will come up. And so a lot of times you'll see trending topics, you know, and it'll say Kim Kardashian or whatever, right? But it's also used as a search term. So what I recommend to people is think about what would be a common, it's no different than keywords, really. That is that is the epitome of a hashtag. If you put in um, dating rich guys in LA, how many people are going to look that up as opposed to dating or mm -hmm. rich guys? You want to put in something that's more common and not too obscure. Right. So people so, are looking for it. Exactly. But, but, but you brought up a good point. You started your own. Uh -huh. So what if you start your own, maybe I want to say, hey, redheaded matchmaker, you know, that's my, well, who's going to look at that? Where, why do you start your own? I mean, how do you get people, how, how does that help you to start your own? Well, it has to be related to something. For example, Monday blogs, I wanted to start a meme where people could share blogs on Mondays. So it seems very self-explanatory. And for the most part it is, although we often get porn and other weirdos sharing discussing things. Um, when, a, when a meme gets very popular, you get all kinds of leeches who tend to Wanted use more. it inappropriately. But for the most part, we get anywhere from eight to 10,000 people participating on Mondays, okay, which okay. is insane, but it's taken three years to get there. Um, so you have to really dedicate yourself. This was blogging on Mondays. It's really obvious what it's about, right? Yeah. Um, if you decided you wanted to do redheaded dating or whatever that was, it has yeah. to be something that's so obvious that people won't question what it's about. Okay. Now, in, in that, it, another way to look at it, for example, I don't mean to get stuck on this, people will say, what's Monday blogs about? And I'm like, Really? <laughs> really. But, but then again, I think I've done everything I possibly could. I actually created the Monday Blogs handle, so there's a Twitter stream mm -hmm. that I retweet everybody on. Okay. I okay. created a page with all the facts on both of my websites that link to it. Perfect. Okay. And I still get questions practically. Yeah, there's always going to be, you know. Yeah, um, it's, you, you do. You try to make it as obvious as possible. Right, but just right. to go back to your original question, um, I think it was Google Plus that adopted hashtags first, and then Facebook finally took them on because Instagram adopted them, and then Facebook bought Instagram. And so now, basically, no matter where you are, um, they hyperlink. And that's the most important reason that you want to use hashtags. So if and, I put if I put a post on Facebook, I, I don't need should I be putting some hashtags on there? No. That's just coming from 
You can because it is searchable now on oh, Facebook. Facebook, really? That's mm -hmm. very interesting. They just started that this year. Yeah. So it's a wonderful yeah. way if somebody goes to Facebook and types in search dating and you don't have anything hashtagged, nothing in your post will come up. So, so I would we, recommend So when doing I put it. up this video of us on Facebook mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, from YouTube, I'm going to put in, the night, in my Facebook, I can say social media, you know, hashtag social media expert, hashtag Bad redhead media, bad redhead media. Hashtag Rachel Thompson. I would actually just do social media because okay. most people, people will be looking if, for social media. Yeah, most people are mm -hmm. probably not going to be looking for bad redhead media right. or okay, got it. You know, that you want to put in more common terms awesome. that people would be mm -hmm. looking for. Because again, it's a very niche uh, amount of people that would be looking up one particular person. Okay. Okay, I want to get into one more thing, and that is Pinterest. Okay. Pinterest, I mean, I, I have a Pinterest account, I think, for years now, and I rarely go on it because how much time do I have in the day? I can barely get everything done. Um, so I concentrate more on Facebook and a little bit of Twitter. Uh, who do you think Pinterest is the best for, and you know, how would you rank it on things that we need to be doing? I just read that over 70 million people are on Pinterest. Um, the breakdown is about 70% women, 30% men, but the men are the fastest growing component. And overall, Pinterest is the fastest growing social media network. So I think if you're not on it, it's a huge mistake. But it depends on who your demographic is. If you're a male writer who writes men's adventure and crime novels, then that may not be the best venue for you. But if you're a female writer who writes about, you know, YA novels or, um, you know, or if you're a wedding planner, my God, really? Oh, yeah. They love looking you know? at all the wedding stuff, people, because the pictures. It's really all about pictures. It's very, it's all visual, but there, there are, if I want to look for a great quote, uh -huh. oh, um, because I do, my books are about, you know, uh, for my author platform, which is totally different branding, of course, than my business platform. Um, if I want to look for a great quote about, you know, trauma or sexual abuse or mental yeah. health, I'll go, I'll go there before I go anywhere else. Okay. That's interesting. Now, one question, uh, question. So we were talking about how Facebook now they are blocking people from using the personal page to promote anything, to sell anything, so a book or whatever. Well, they're not blocking or people. Shutting you down. They can shut you down, they can suspend you, or completely shut down your account with no warning whatsoever. And I was shocked about this, I, and uh, I, I'm lucky I haven't been shut down, because sometimes I will post my book or a friend's book or something. Yeah. So, well, a friend's book is okay. It's, it's, it's oh, a it's fun. not self-promotion they don't want you to Self-promotion. But, you know, I'd be very wary about promoting really anything. Um, when we all sign up for Facebook, we all click on, you know, the, the legal jargon that nobody ever reads. fine print that we never read. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, and one of those points, I think it's point number four, because I went out of my way to find it after one of my friend's accounts was shut down for no reason, and she sent me a message just crying, like, oh, my God, what do I do? Um, and I went to find that point, and it said that you shall not use, you shall not, like Moses on the you know, mountain, you shall not use your personal account for personal gain. Wow. And that includes any product or service. And so I, here I am, I'm an author with a product and I'm a business person with a service. Right. So, you know. So we have to have our pro professional pages for that. So what about Pinterest though? Can you put your books in your, you, that's, you can do all that there, correct? No, they're very specific about that too, okay. but they do offer business accounts and oh. they're free. Oh, okay. And they look they look absolutely no different. So when you sign up, they'll say, do you want to make this a business account? It's free of charge. Click here. Okay. And they offer you analytics and all kinds of wonderful things. I tell everybody, just make it a business account. Okay. So I've got a, I, so when I, my new book comes out, I should just open a Pinterest, a new Pinterest page business account and start using that. 
You can actually take your current account uh -huh. and just switch it over oh, right now. And my followers will switch over. Mm -hmm. Nothing See, changes. On Facebook, it doesn't. Your followers Super won't switch easy. over. Super easy. Your yep. followers won't switch over on Facebook, right? No. So. No. Uh, well, it. see, the thing is, the thing, well, it gets sticky. Um, we can't really go into it here, but you can't, it's different when you have a Facebook account, which is a personal account where people friend you, and then you have a page where people mm -hmm. like you. Okay. Now, you can actually take all of your friends and switch them over to your page, but then you lose your account. Mm -hmm. I see. Right? You can switch it and you can do that. I yeah. mean, you're allowed to do that. Um, it's kind of a new option, but well, you just know everything. So I just want to thank you for stopping <laughs> by and, and uh, giving your advice. And you guys, if you want to know more, I'm going to put all the links because you really should be getting her newsletter, following her blog. She has all these free tips. And if you thank want to work you. with her, she's a great um, coach. She can even tweet for you. You don't even need to do it. You could be laying in bed and Rachel can be tweeting out your info. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Thank you so much, Marla. Take care.